Bum, ba, da, ba, da. I've got this video going in my background up until I paused it. Mr. Mine pilot episode entering the mine by Army Veteran Gamer four months ago. All right. Look at my ugly face for a second. It's beautifully horrible, isn't it? I've got my own bit going here. Uh, I'm saving up diamond right now. So that I can craft... Uh, what was it? Yeah. The sifting drill. Cool, bloody hell. Now, let me just say an introduction to the game of Mr. Mine. It is a predominantly, or mostly, idle game with some clicker elements involved. Uh, for the most part, you will just be collecting resources and balancing selling them and using them to craft upgrades to the drill. As you can see right here, the sell center where you can sell resources you've acquired. I haven't gotten very far, which I'll show you exactly how far down I've gone eventually. And the ore and the isotopes. Those are the resources you get. Higher center. You use these to increase the efficiency at which your little miners here go about digging and acquiring more resources. At the higher center, uh, let's see. There's a pre-menu to what's displayed here where you go from having one line to you buy all ten lines completely full of miners. And then this extra menu pops up. You go from, uh, they start with picks, you go to a shovel, you go to a hammer, uh, jackhammers. What was one billion? I don't remember, but six billion is these little, um, chariots, as you can see. And then you get to the trading post, and then you keep going down, down, down. Oh, wonderful. You got a bunch of money in a chest. That's one part where the active clicking comes into play. You keep going down, you get a golem, you get extra blueprints to craft from him. And onward and onward. <clears throat> ah, there's another element of the active clicking. Some of these resources pop up and you get to click on them as well. And on and on and on. Currently at 116 kilometers down. Scientists, you'll get those in boxes that your miners dig up. And then you'll get to send them out on missions, as it were. And I have filled <laughs> my relic space that, that's currently available. All with endless miner speed potions. At 5% each, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Then this old fella up here gives you your fucking quests, and you complete those. Then this is this is the microtransaction store. My stance on microtransactions for this infinite monetizable um, layout, this this type of setup, none of this should be above five dollars. And as as far as the $1 option, this should be 100 tickets. 
seriously that this microtransaction system this this exact same copy paste system is in a lot of idle and clicker games and it is it's intrusive and it's egregious it is overly egregious you shouldn't have to put a hundred real world dollars to get anything in any fucking game at all. So, you know, for the developers, you rebalance this toward the maximum is a five dollar purchase, and it's giving you upwards of a hundred thousand tickets. Yeah, I'll be happy to promote your game. As long as it's balanced properly. And then you can use tickets to buy whatever chest here. I actually did uh, go and find the email for the devs working on it. I've asked them, hey, how far down do you have to go? for getting the managers because I've seen a couple of videos on YouTube there's not very many people playing this game <laughs> it doesn't have a lot of exposure so that someone can sit down and make a complete guide to the game at this current time but what I've suggested as a, an idea, is simply, you know, once you get to 100 kilometers down, why not have the, a scripted event simply introduce you to the, the concept of the managers. That way you can get the uh, offline earnings going at that point. So it's a milestone that continues the teaching of the game mechanics. And what else is there to say about it? So far, and in, in the game's current state, it is incredibly slow. This, in, this concept of incredibly slow progress in idle and clicker games is meant to drive you to the microtransaction store. I know that. The devs know that. Stop pussyfooting around. Just don't bother trying to refute it. And stop having these overly egregious, really overpriced microtransactions. Balance it out to a $5 maximum. Calculate your cost to earnings, your price index ratios, whatever you want to call it, calculate it out for finite earnings instead of infinite monetization. Make a game worth playing and put in the microtransactions to increase the enjoyment of the game. Don't make them overpriced as they are currently. That model is just horrid. It's a public relations nightmare. Just like the Telltale Games problem with Seven Days to Die and the original Fun Pimps trying to get it back and redo everything. They've gone so many updates on their Steam version, their PC version, that they cannot bring the console version for the previous Xbox One system up to date. Which, you know, because of the because of that, I'm far more forgiving because they outsourced it to a company that fucked it over royally. With Mr. Mine, however, you're not fucking it over royally outside of your own greed and short-sightedness. So far, I haven't got very far into the game. But a hundred hours just to get this far. Yeah, how, how many hours have I put into it? 
120 and a half. With these idle and clicker type games, it's it's a fun distraction from the fast-paced games. It's more relaxed. It's just something to pass the time. Why overprice the microtransactions? and design the gameplay around any idle or clicker game strictly for infinite monetization. The only thing you're going to do is in the short run, yeah, you might get a few hundred people to buy some things because they want to get through it because they're idiot fucking 13 and 8 year olds who don't know any better and they have access to mommy and daddy's credit card. But in the long run, this model of monetization is going to wind up before Parliament just like loot boxes. It is a severe lack of better judgment. I don't know how else I can stress that. But anyway, <clears throat> that concludes... The introductory part to the egregious monetization practice of this game and other games like it. On the whole, it's a nice game to throw some time into. Just a time waster, basically. Like all clicker and idle games. There needs to be some changes to the tutorialization that allows you a scripted event where you get a manager for your thing so you can do the offline profits when as soon as you hit a depth of 100 kilometers down there needs to be that milestone there to improve the quality of gameplay <clears throat> um Other than that, the people working on developing and putting the updates out for this game, they're doing all right. So what I said about the monetization, don't take it against them. It is an industry-wide cancer. All it takes is one person in the industry saying, okay, this egregious monetization system, it's as bad as loot boxes. Dial it back to where it's acceptable. <clears throat> in the short term, you're looking at less money per person coming in, but in the long term, you're looking at more prom promotion from people who enjoy the game, who like it, and who feel more inclined to spend money and promote other people spending money in your game because it's fair value trade. Yeah, I get it. Shit's really fucking tough right now for everyone. But you don't have to do this over-egregious monetization. That is the single biggest problem with every clicker and idle game. Over-expense, over-egregious monetization. And it is the next thing that's going to wind up in Parliament. Just like loot boxes with EA did. So go ahead and start dialing that back right now. So that when the AAA branch of the gaming industry goes in, you don't have to worry about anything. Because you've already dialed it back. Your ass won't be on the chopping block. I'm saying this because I give a fuck to see some more success 
out of the non-AAA gaming industry branches. Yeah, I'll keep stressing that point to make sure that it gets drilled into everyone's heads. Now, in the event that the devs for this game actually do dial back the microtransactions some anywhere close to what I suggested, I'll be happy to throw five and ten dollars into it. More, the more the merrier. It'll be beneficial for me playing the game and getting enjoyment out of it, and it'll be beneficial for them getting a couple extra dollars. More people enjoy the game, more people are more willing to spend money in the game. As it stands right now, with the current monetization microtransaction policies in place, hundred fucking dollars. I see no reason because there is little enjoyment for me to increase in spending money in this game. As far as idle clicker games, Leaf Blower Revolution was a lot faster in its progression even before the most recent updates to it. So, if and when the game progression speed is uh, increased to a point where it's not egregiously and noticeably, you know, forcing people to do the microtransaction thing and the price of the microtransactions currently in it drop, to something that is acceptable, I won't have a problem spending money in this game. That's a note for you developers of the game. Don't misconstrue what I'm saying and harping on as a negative slant. For me, this is just me presenting the information as I see it to you. <clears throat> now, I've already done a minor introduction to how the game functions. I've yammered on long enough about it. I would promote getting this game and not buying any microtransactions until the prices decrease and the gameplay's progression speed increases. What percentage of increase? I'll leave that up to the developers to decide. Something to where it doesn't feel like it's pushing me into the microtransaction store. Those are the only two problems with the game. How slow it is, forcing you into the microtransactions, and the egregious overpriced microtransactions. Increase the speed, dial back the exorbitant fee of the microtransactions. I won't have a problem with it. Hell, I'll fucking promote the game as much as possible to the limited 60 people who have subscribe to my infinitesimally small YouTube channel. Other than that, that's the end of this video. I've got nothing else to say right now. I haven't learned enough of the game to make a further tutorial past the introduction of how the gameplay works. I'll make another video talking about the um, scientists later. Once I've got more information on how they function. Till next time.
Toodles, everyone.